and you're welcome to another episode of Analyze This. My name is Tunjay Andrews, and with me on the show as usual is my beautiful co-host. I'm your best co-host, Honey Ogunde. See, I have to say it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we're going to be talking about corporate governance structure of Nigerian businesses. Well, what it is, what it should be, the good, the bad, and the ugly of the entire uh, scenario. We have a guest with us on the show, too, that will be basically taking us through some of the realities of corporate governance structure in Nigeria. So I think when you use all these big words and corporate speak, I think the first thing to do is break it down for people at home who might not know what it means. Uh, what do you mean by corporate governance? It's basically the set of rules that um, are expected to protect, um, uh, for a business that are expected to protect the shareholders, the employees, the, I mean, the owners, the, the staff, everybody around the business, the business itself too. And um, generally it is, you know, best practice, you know, like this is what the business should do. The business should have this. The business should pay taxes. The business should have a board. The business should pay salaries. So those things basically make the corporate governance of a business. And in, in the Nigerian context, um, we've seen, and, and I think this happens in a lot of the world too, we've seen that things are not how they should be. Mm -hmm. You know, even though we expect them to be, but they're really always not black and white. Yeah, and I think if you have good corporate governance, it can really come to stand for the company, especially when the company is going through bad times, right? Exactly. Or, or even good times. Even good times. Even when you want to raise money, your your uh, corporate governance structure plays, a, important, plays yeah. a good role. Um, when you're going through your crisis, as you just said. I don't um, go through crisis, Jesus name, but... For those who are going through crisis, <laughs> a corporate governance structure can help you do Well, so yes, of course. In experience. dealing with uh, the regulators or whoever, it depends. You know, the fact that you have uh, a proper governance structure helps you make your punishment a bit lighter because they kind of feel this person has always been good, so let's just chill on this person. So, yeah, it's good to have proper governance structure. But are all Nigerians, all Nigerian businesses having the right corporate governance structure. Yeah, and I think a good place to start with trying to frame that is there are many different types of business yeah. businesses, right? So, you know, there's limited the liability. liability company, there's the public uh, quoted companies, which must have at least 50 shareholders for it to be publicly quoted. There's sole traders, so that's yeah, like one that's individual person one individual running a business. Person, and uh, there's the business name. I think the sole trader and the business name is kind of merged into one. Um, that's basically your your me and my son enterprises kind of thing. Yeah. Me and Honey will be will be putting we'll together. We'll be starting our business, business yeah. wrapping and Honey finance and I sure. enterprises. You know, yes. there is a structure that governs for like NGOs as well, right? Yes, yes, true, and that's that's a bit different altogether. You have to have a board of trustees and all of that. So. You know, you must have that corporate governance structure set for your business before you start. Yeah, so most businesses that we that people register like limited liability companies, right? And that kind of protects you in the instance if the company goes bust, you know, that you're not individually responsible, but True. rather it's the company. True. And in those cases, those kind of companies need to have some kind of board, right? Yeah, so they need to have a board. I mean, it's, it's just basic. From the limited liability company to the publicly quoted companies, you must have a board. You know, even in your incorporation documents, it's a board of trustees. I think this, I'm not sure if it's the CO7 or the CO2 document, but one of them has highlighted where you have the board of trustees on it. So, yes, it is basically law. Exciting. Uh, yeah. Tell us so, more. So we're going to be uh, introducing our guest on the show. Who's going to help us uh, find out explosive things about when corporate <laughs> governance and structure goes bad or good. I'm super excited to be introducing... Mr. Ugo Obichuku of Nairometrics, which is a financial <laughs> literacy company. And I'm obsessed with them on Twitter, by the way. You should go and follow that account if you're not already. And they really break down some of the interesting intrigues and stories of Nigerian corporates, corporates yeah. or corporations, right? The stories they would never really hear about. Um, and, they, and they do a mix of, you know, facts and, and just coming out the annual reports and publicly information to bring out some of these like riveting corporate stories. So I'm super, super excited. Um, I'm a stand for your Twitter page. Thank you for coming on Analyze This. And I know you're great friends with Tunji, so he's pretty excited that you're here. So by the way, he's the publisher of Naira Metrics. It's called me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm his friend. <laughs> Why are you issuing your disclaimer so early? Well, it is very important because there are some things he's doing these days that's, you know, very, very good for the <laughs> progress of Nigeria as a Entity. But not good for your friendship. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us, like, what? Why is corporate governance like super important? 
this is an example of why it's super important. <laughs> 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 so, you have bad friends. Where you have, you know. Anyway, so, um, great, great, great to be here. Um, corporate governance is, you know, something that uh, countries all over the world have found, you know, uh, to be very uh, important uh, in terms of not just trying to, you know, ensure that you have companies that sort of like have, you know, rules, governing rules that, that uh, you know, you can emulate. At the same time, uh, they've also realized that, look, you know, you got to protect shareholders. Uh, companies have, you know, a duty to protect shareholders. Companies have duties to pay their taxes. Companies also have, you know, corporate social responsibilities. It does have a duty to their employees as well to make sure that their employees are well catered for. And then there's this, the most important thing, of course, is the culture. So every company has a corporate culture. So, uh, but the, 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 the number, the underlining thing or the principle of, you know, what basically determines or defines a company's corporate culture is, is corporate governance. So that's why it's it's really big, uh, in, you know, worldwide, and, and Nigeria is not left out as well. So we have, you know, what you call our own version of a corporate governance code, that sort of like mirrors what you find in you know a lot of other countries. So I, I want to start with, um, I mean, um, Honey was just talking about uh, what you do on Twitter. We're breaking down some of those stuff um, about corporate governance uh, issues with corporates in Nigeria. I want to ask why you and look, why you started to look in that direction because I mean it's it's not something that we do in our free time. I mean, you know, so why, because you must have taken time to. You why know, do you think history, it's important? To why do you think it's like important? To yeah, the to document well, the stories. Well, um, to me, I mean, like for for a lot of um, you know young Nigerians and you know people who startup founders and guys who are probably you know two, three, four, five years into you know you know growing their own business and even those. You know, young people who are about to take over the mantle in, in a lot of their uh, uh, companies or where they work. I thought that, look, there's, there's, a, there's a whole lot that, you know, people can actually learn. And, and these are things that you don't always have to sort of like, you know, go to the four walls university to learn. And even if you can't afford to pay for, you know, business schools and, and, and all, you can actually, you know, learn from what, you know, is exactly happening. And what a lot of people don't realize is that we actually have a stock market. And the stock market means there's a lot of public information that is out there. Out so there. information that, you know, of how, you know, companies actually run their business, that is actually out there. And like, you know, like people say, you know, if you want to hide anything from Nigeria, just put it in, book. Know, in the book. So <laughs> companies have this like 180 page annual report, which is actually like a gold mine. There's a whole lot of information in there that you can actually learn from how, uh, you know, the, the, who owns the most shares, who got, got booted out, who is the new director, who, who is the related party, who is supplying what to who, to which director, whole lot of stuff. Has the business been run? And you have annual reports that date back to like 10 years. So you can actually pick up a company and tell a story from you know, the first day the CEO probably resumed all the way you know, to the most recent uh, time. So a lot of these things are not out there. And I thought, you know what? People really need to understand that we also have our own version of, I think there's this series, Billions or yeah. uh, Wall Street, you know, Wall Street, Street all this. Exactly, we have our own version. But I mean, if there's one thing Americans are very good at, they're good at really telling their story. Stories, yeah. So but here in Nigeria, we really are not. So yeah. you probably know more about maybe the big shot, a lot of the things that happen in, in the US in the 2008, nine mm -hmm. financial crisis. Nine, but we also had our own version here that yeah. a lot of us can learn from. So and if we don't learn from this, what's going to happen is there's going to be another generation that's going to commit the same, the same you know, make the same mistakes. So for me, I'm like, you know what? There's got to be a way to deliver this to people in a way that they can, you know, relate with, they can understand without, you know, bringing up all the grammar, yeah. you know, and, and all of the um, stuff that Tunji does very corporate well. language. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah no, I know. I think it is super interesting, and I think I agree with you 100. percent And you know, part of the thing is that Nigerians and Africans we don't tell our stories. And well enough so you'll know even for startups as she like in my space like in tech yeah. you know the startup stories of twitter you know of facebook exactly they but tell you us don't know those stories but then you see like drone businesses and you don't really know the stories and yeah. another thing also is we end up seeing the companies when they're like huge and we all have no idea of how, how they yes. did it yeah. so yeah. it just looks yeah. like magic and then everybody is waiting for yeah. their own godfather to anoint them so that you know you too you can have your own business. exactly but what you've documented i think with your stories is that it's really a process and you know there have been intrigues and there have been stumbling blocks and there have been, you know, parts that they've gone through and, and they've just been able to find their way through that. So it's, you know, I must commend on that. So I, I want to even ask, is there an incentive to have corporate governance in Nigeria? Because we've heard about stories where 
um, someone is, you know, drew down billions and billions because the person was MD. And we've seen situations whereby um, shareholder um, shares were diluted to the point where it's almost worthless. And in this same scenario where we are supposed to be pushing corporate governance, and some of them might just get away with it because it's not like they are breaking the law or anything. Um, how do we have it and how do shareholders get protected? Oof, corporate governance is, I mean, like I was telling a group of um, friends um, a, a few days ago, we were trying to set up a company and I, and one of the questions I asked was, look, what kind of company are we looking to set up? I mean, like, what's the DNA of this company? Are we looking to set up a company that it's, you know, going to be by the books from day one? Like, you know, no cutting corners and all that, or are we, you know, going to build a company that is just, man, anyhow, shall just, 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 we'll just make it to the top and all that know? kind of, you know? So, so it matters. And it does because, Tunji, think about how many people you know, you know who have lost their jobs, hmm. not because they are not working hard, but because right? the company just because you have a bunch of you know directors or companies who basically have run the company and ground, ground. Yeah. right? So I mean, like, who protects your interest? Mm -hmm. So who is that person that says, "Look, I just got out of school. My parents sent me to school, spent a lot of money on me, and now you know I've I've, I've just got a job. I'm serious. I'm trying to build a career, and then you're in your second year building a career." and then it, the company just goes bust. Now that stigma, in most cases, stays with you because then you can't find, you can't get another job. job and even yeah. if you're gonna get another job, they're gonna price you lower, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah, so and then what about shareholders? Even if it's not a publicly listed company, I can wanna invest in your startup. So I'm like, okay, you know what? I like what you're doing, you know what? But I'm gonna give you this check so that you can continue to grow. But I also need to be sure that- Once I got, give you the check. You know, corporate governance behind you, like how do you run your business? I was talking to some guy, very rich guy, you know, a few weeks ago, and he actually invests in startups. And you know what he says, like, well, you know what, I'm done. And I'm like, why? He says, I'm done. Tell me. He says, look, I've got this guy, brilliant guy. He pitched me once. I liked him and I invested in his business. But guess what? Two years down the line, he says he's done with that business. He's going on something else. So he's got somebody else running for him. And he's like, dude, I didn't invest in your, I invested in you, you. Yeah. True. right? Because I felt you had a vision. And I'm like, if I stick behind your vision, you're going to make me money. But now you've left. So, of course, he didn't check if the company had good corporate governance. Like, you know, how do you run your company? Like, are you, there's some other guy as well who says, oh, look, I've got this guy, invest the money in him. But guess what? A few days later, I see him. I was traveling out and I see him in business class with me. I'm like, <laughs> well, this guy want to be that. This one is, so like, so corporate governance takes care of things like that. So yeah. how do you mm. separate, you know, your personal life from business? What are the rules around an expenditure? What are the rules around... Do you around, have limits, right? Exactly. Do you have limits, limits for spending? What's your salary uh, levels? Your employees, how do you, you know, uh, remunerate them? Uh, what about work culture? How do you address women? How do you address yourselves? Are you a barista? Twinji? What is we SEC, NSC doing? Who well, are those? Twinji, um, those Securities are and Exchange Commission, Commission and Nigerian Stock Exchange. So, so those are regulators, and and quite frankly, uh, it's it in a way it's not really their job to you know to instill corporate governance in your business. So there are, there are other institutions or government agencies that actually develop corporate governance codes, but the problem is that a lot of Nigerians don't know them. Uh, I give you an example. Um, the latest corporate governance code says that uh, you can be uh, a chairman of your business and also an MD of your business. Mm. So like in the US, for example, you can be chairman, MD, mm. like CEO, all in all. Founder. Right, yeah, so, Founder, so boy, in Nigeria, chairman. corporate governance rules, you can be. So if you're an MD, you've got to have a chairman, mm -hmm. right? Another, one, another example is you can have your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad on your board. Come on, it's just going to be you and somebody else <laughs> in your family. That's it. Okay, so you only allowed so to have two have, members. Yeah, we have that already here. Right, a lot of people don't know that, right? Yeah, so I like your body like, man, this is my company. I don't want anybody. Let me just put my, my daughter's name. My son, <laughs> my father, my well, sister. who is supposed to like so who checks? This is the thing, thing about this information. I don't think people are necessarily doing that because they want That's to do that, I'm but saying. they don't know. So where are you supposed is it the owners on you to now go and start reading the corporate and governance? So you see, you know what I believe in uh, honey, I, I believe in um 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 uh, incentives. You know, the like, you know, rules of incentive. Incentives, as far as I'm concerned, kind of like, 
you know, puts everybody in order. Check, yeah. So um, if you're looking for, you know, the policeman to come and always check, you're not going to see anybody. So, but then if you're an investor, right, um, you can, in a way, squeeze companies to actually comply with co corporate governor rules. To be real, right, when you're starting up, it's difficult to have these things because yeah. you're starting up. So yeah. you, there's, there's going to be mistakes here and there. Your but business as you like, scale up. But as you scale, like your third, fourth year, come on, you've got to have an audited account. So if I'm going to invest in your business, so I'm going to supply things to you, I'm going to have any business dealings with you, I'm going to ask for a few things. I'm like, look, do you have an audited account? Do you have a tax clearance certificate? Are you registered for taxes? Uh, what is your board composition? Because I want because those things they tell me a lot about your business. Yeah. So if I look at your board, I'm like, can you can I have your like your board composition? And it just it's just you and some guy. And I'm like, ah, this is it's a limited liability company, yes, but well, <laughs> you're the you're one running it. So you've got no one that. checking you. So if you just decide to disappear one day, there's nobody I can hold on to, mm. right? So um, you know, what kind of banks do you use? Um, who are your you know employees? What are their 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 their, yeah, their profile? Kiddos? So that's yeah. why yeah. when you have when people ask you send me a profile, those are the kind of things they are trying to look at. Yeah. So those are incentives that should actually you know sort of like Help whip you, you in line. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, if you know, and another thing is independent director. You actually should have an independent director. For example, in your business, right? Tunji probably doesn't have shares in your business, but you can make him independent Yeah, director. somebody that is from outside. So he's got no business. He doesn't have any interest. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah so interest. he's there just to make sure that, look, you know, there's some kind of corporate Objectivity in, in the running of the business. Right. And so you, I think one of the great things that I want to sort of leave here for small business. So you're a small business today. You've just now discovered that you're not allowed to have your mom, dad, your brother, <laughs> and sister, and your two kids. And your business, auntie. <laughs> and your auntie. And MC Tunji also, uh, what are you supposed to do? What are sort of the first steps you do in terms of instigating a board or just instigating some kind of corporate governance for your business? Bear in mind that you're a small company, right? So do I need to bring you or do I just need to well, fantastic. So very good question. So um, first thing you want to do, you're starting up, um, it's just you, isn't yeah. it? So um, you have your company registered and by law you have two shareholders yeah. to register a company. So probably you and your dad or your sister or your spouse, whoever, or your partner, right? So you guys start up, uh, by law, you're not expected to maybe submit an audited account till about 18 months. So typically, you know, some companies delay two years, but in your third year max, you should get an accountant in to, you know, sort out your books. So point one is get an accountant. Yeah, sort out your books and have your accounts audited. Now, before that, the day you register the company, go to the nearest, nearest tax office around you Right and get a tax identification number yeah. that legitimizes. Now they make it compulsory actually because you can't exactly. open it. You can't even open the bank account. account. So exactly. You have so to so do that. so so you do that and then sit with your partner or on your own. Write out how do I want my company to be governed? Like what kind of company do I want? Right. Mm -hmm. So do I want a company that has you know very solid solid you know you know Ethics, structure? Yeah. Do I want to separate myself from my company or do I just want to be spending my company money anyhow? Love, so love like just. Stuff. You know, you don't have to get a lawyer, just, just write you it decide, out yourself. Yeah. yeah. So, but as you hit your fourth, fourth year, it's time for you to, you're expanding. Yes, now, maybe, you know, probably get one or two other people on your board. It also actually helps that you get somebody who is independent, who is experienced, right? Because they also open doors for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, if you've got somebody who, you know, experienced guy, people know the person, and you have him as your board of director, investors, businesses, people that are, you, you're probably going to be, you know, clients, they see you as a serious one. You've got this kind of guy on your board. Okay, you're serious. So have that kind of person on your board. And then you gradually, you know, start to, you know, keep you, put your business in the right, you know, structure, frame, right, yeah. right, right frame. And then as you go on, you get an auditor, auditor who is permanent. Make sure that you have all your records filed in the Corporate Affairs Commission. These things are very, they're very, very important as you grow. Because you see, the, a lot of problems we have in Nigeria is that when, once we have startups, we just feel, oh, this this startup is just here for sustenance reasons. Just you know, feed me, you know, pay for my school, children's school fees and all. But pay you have rent. to, at the back of your mind, think big. Like, look, this is going to be a corporate. This is a company that's going to employ a thousand people right? someday. So I've got to start well with the right foundation. So um, just you know, in the first five years, you should have a board. You should have, uh, you should pay your taxes. You should have audited accounts for all the years. You should have registered address. You should have employees that you pay pension, pension, uh, you pay their pension. Well, that's if you hire over five. If you hire, hire over three, actually. Is it three? Right, three, actually. So make sure you have them. Give them medical insurance and stuff like that. 
just and then have like let your employees also understand the culture of the culture, business, yeah. no matter how small it is, because you know what, that's going to be the foundation for having a world class company. Thank you so much. This has been like a truth bomb, even for me. I, I've learned a ton. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing about corporate governance with us. I'm Should still biting my tongue. You're going to you. be biting Thank this you for, 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 <laughs> for coming on the show. But it's, it's, it's just one of those things that we hope to see better done in, in Nigeria, where companies can actually be accountable to their shareholders. Yeah. In Nigeria right now, I'm not entirely sure it is. Yeah, I think more than anything, what I've really learned is that, you know, it's all about growing the way that you wish to grow. Yeah. So if you exactly. want to build, yeah, I know. A world-class yeah, organization. Yeah, if you want to build a world-class organization, you got to structure it as such from the beginning. And, yeah. and, and so you kind of have to walk the walk, right? So, I, you know, there's a lot of talk around, I want to build a global business, I want to be this, and then you're not actually in practice really <laughs> yeah, doing okay. that. So that's kind of what really stuck out for me. So I think for people at home who are watching and they're thinking, okay, I, you know, I have a small business, might be selling cake today, but I want it to be this global nationwide or Pan-African business, then you have to kind of structure your business in that way so that when it gets to that stage, it's not to like, you know, fish out of water. You're used to running your mm -hmm. business properly from yeah. day one. Yeah. Okay, guys, if you want to follow us and talk more about corporate governance, you can follow us at Indani TV using the hashtag Analyze This. You can also follow me uh, at Honey Ogundei on all the social media handles. Um, and my co-host? Um, Tunji Andrews, Twitter, Instagram, everywhere, basically. Ugodre? Yeah. Can we reach you? At Ugodre, and you can also send me an email anytime. I would disclose my email address. Tweet at me. <laughs> Visit our website as well, diametrics.com. He's at Ugo Dre, and you can follow at Nairometrics yeah, too. Yeah. So. Excellent stuff. Thank you guys. Until next time, see you. Have a good week.